Roman Reigns has become a legend. I know that'll annoy some, but he has. The man is so good, there's a reason he did hold the world title for 1,316 days. Not everybody could do this. Given he did have such a mad run, though, it seems only right to go through his journey and remind ourselves of some things WWE would like you to forget. Number 10, Suffering Succotash. So we shall start with the obvious one. What the hell were we thinking? Given that Roman was already being booed, the fact WWE thought it would be a good idea to get him to say Suffering Succotash like he was Bugs Bunny is totally mad. It was like we wanted him to be jeered, or we just wanted to wind people up. This was all the way back on the 9th of January 2015 Smackdown 2, so the battle had already begun. Either way, the big dog was feuding with Seth Rollins, and this is how we thought we'd turn the tide. It didn't, and it's such a stupid line, I don't see how anybody can't realize it's more suitable for a heel to say that than somebody you're trying to make into a hero. This is another reason I respect Roman even more, however. The man rebuilt himself. Because don't kid yourself, he knows this tool. He's not an idiot. Number 9, he wasn't the first choice in the Shield. And do not forget, the Shield originally were going to be a group to protect CM Punk's world title run. That's right. As such, Punk and WWE were trying to figure out who could be part of a new trio with Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose being on the list. Kind of interesting given the relationship between Punk and Rollins now. There was a point where they had mutual respect for each other. Whereas CM wanted Chris Hero though, who was then Cassius Ono in NXT, the powers that be saw it differently. They had a guy called Roman Reigns who was ready to be their next star, and this could be the very vehicle to get him. Now, I would have loved it if Hero got this nod because he's absolutely great. I don't think we can say Roman being in it was a mistake. Before it did go wrong, people loved the aura of the shield and Reigns was a part of that. As usual though, we got carried away and we hit the go button way too soon. Number 8, that Raw Rumble rejection. Go watch this right now and get back to me. It's crazy, right? It was the 2015 Raw Rumble though and the evidence was all there. So don't pretend WWE didn't know. They absolutely knew. Because Roman was going to win this even if the Philadelphia crowd didn't like it, so how can we get around this? Let's put all our brains together and come up with something. And then we thought, it's easy, we just booked The Rock to join his cousin. This was such a train wreck, however, because the audience that night just booed Dwayne Johnson too, who they decided was guilty by association. It is quite funny, Rocky doesn't know what to do and his face is a picture. There was also another moment where that pivot was there waiting for us. We could have just turned Roman and got all the Tribal Chief stuff years ago, but no. Onwards we went, even though I'm sure Johnson said something. I mean, he'd literally been through the same thing in 1997. This was really silly. Number 7, The Last Man Standing Error This wasn't Roman's fault, but still. Sometimes funny is funny. As Reigns and Kevin Owens fought in a last man standing match of the 2021 Royal Rumble though, KO handcuffed Reigns to the furniture. Made sense. How can you answer a count of 10 if you are stuck? It was just meant to be a way to trick you into thinking the head of the table was going to lose, especially as Paul Heyman had the key to save him. Easy peasy. Problem was, it was one of those instances where Heyman couldn't get the key in the lock as the referee had a meltdown. He knew the actual finish, but this was taking way too long. So the overall count was slowed to a crawl, so obviously this was amazing. It meant if wrestling was on the up and up, Kevin would be the new champion, but wrestling may be predetermined, and therefore we just stalled. Of course, this stuff happens all the time in sports entertainment, but again, it tickled me. The panic they must have had also sort of gives me hope that WWE uses this one day to get Owens back into the title picture, but I'm not going to hold my breath because one, that won't happen, and two, I will definitely die. Number 6 is Mania match with The Undertaker Even The Undertaker has said he didn't really like this match. He wasn't at his best and felt like he let Roman down. It's quite the reveal. No, I did watch this again. I don't think it's that bad. It just suffers due to the dead man's injuries and that it shouldn't have been in the main event. Taker had already lost at Mania, so that excitement was gone, and Roman was overexposed by this point would have worked so much better as match four or something. The spot most referred to is when the tombstone just went all kinds of wrong and yeah, it's not great. It just wasn't meant to be and it does get a little bit awkward. I'm not sure anybody involved does want to talk about this anymore though because we have moved on and that's for the best. Sometimes we make mistakes, all we can do is learn from them. Number five, the dog food nonsense. So this was really bad, even I think that, and I'm Mr. Positive Pete. I hate the argument that it was an angle for kids because even children knew this was dumb. Embarrassing is embarrassing, no matter how you want to package it up. Both Roman and their opponent Baron Corbin have spoken about how much they disliked it too because yeah, the whole story was the pair covering each other in dog food. Great. Paul Baron also had to make terrible dog jokes and somebody in a mutt costume even came to the ring. This is painful to watch, mostly because it's only designed for one man. 
you know the deal. It's not even so bad that it's good levels either. It's just awful, and it makes me sad, and I'm crying right now. The new regime would never allow this today, and that is the correct move. It helped absolutely no one. Number four, the Blood Brothers. So this isn't a big deal, especially as the Samoan family just goes this way. They have a strong bond. I think that's nice. Given the story WWE has been trying to tell on TV, though, of course they don't want to talk about this. Ruins the whole idea. But yes, if we do indeed go off science, while the Anawaii and Maivia families are super close, they are not actually officially blood-related. I mean, does it matter? Not really. And as we saw throughout WrestleMania, we told our own version of this, and it was great. Amazingly, these two still haven't had the one-on-one -on -one match, but I would guess that's destined for 2026. And maybe then we will play around with this, or we can go even harder. Both guys are going to be fine. They megastars. When you are watching it on the TV, though, yeah, try not to think about it. Otherwise, the whole thing will fall apart. Number three, the wellness policy violation. So Roman owned this. It's important to state that, and also we've no idea what this was for. Never came out. Given Reigns has had plenty of very serious medical issues, I think we have to tread carefully here too, because who knows? Maybe it was something he felt he needed. Maybe it was just a mistake. Were ripples throughout WWE due to it though, because around the Money in the Bank 2016 pay-per-view, not only did the world title leave Roman and bounce around the Shield guys, it was announced 24 hours after this that he had been suspended due to the above. It wasn't great as Reigns was the company's top guy, although there was an upside. It showed that WWE was taking this side of the business seriously. Nobody but nobody was safe. We do all screw up here and there though, and Roman seems to be in a good place these days. So more of that, we've had enough tragedy before. Number two, WWE weren't going to do the Tribal Chief. Nope, that was all Roman Reigns' idea. It's one of the few things which actually used the pandemic to improve the situation, because after the dog food nonsense and the fact Roman had to take care of his health, he went home. For a while, it was a smart move. Mostly because when it was time to get going again, Reigns made it very clear it is ridiculous to carry on as normal because there aren't any fans. Let's switch things up and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, once again, there's no fans. But he was right. It all started with that world title win and then the association with Paul Heyman. But within weeks, Roma was clearly far more comfortable with this character, and it was the persona he should have had from day one. By the time the bloodline had formed around him, he was better than ever, and everything just leveled up from this point, basically throughout 2020. 2022 and 2023. From WWE's side of things, however, they were just happy to carry on with what we did have, which is crazy and wrong. So, so wrong. Imagine we still had that today. Number one, he didn't defend the title that much. 11 matches Roman Reigns had in 2023. No, I think that's awesome because protect yourself, brother. But the internet didn't feel the same. They were really mad about it. It does make sense because as the WWE Super Champion, there's a certain level of expectation. On the other hand, it did make Reigns feel super special when he turned up. People would flock to this as well, be it TV or house shows. There are different ways to go about it. From a WWE point of view, though, they love shouting how long he had been the champion, and yet when you get stats like this, it does take away some of the allure of holding the belt that long. We could all do this. Just hide away and hope. Ultimately, it worked for Roman, but you'll never hear the company talk about this. It breaks their whole narrative, and well, that's not something they really want to do. Is there anything else about Roman Reigns you think we all need to forget? Well, you can remind everybody in the comments below, which makes absolutely no sense, and you can like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, I do appreciate you. I am Simon from What Culture, and if you need to picture me, I am very bald and kind of look like an egg. It's a sad time for me right now. Goodbye.